Hi, you are watching Christian Vice TV, your favorite gospel entertainment blog house in Ghana, West Africa, and the whole world at large. If you like our videos, please do subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell to receive post notifications and alerts. What's up, Christian Viber? Welcome to your favorite gospel entertainment blog house, your number one stop channel for all your gospel content in Ghana, West Africa, and the whole world at large. Christian Vibes TV, if today is your first time watching our channel, kindly subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell beside it to receive post notifications and alerts whenever we post a new video on this channel. If today is your first time actually following, go through our channel, check out the content, the ones that you like, watch them, leave a comment, leave a like, and leave a share. We love you and we want to see you here all the time. So there is this story that I have come across on social media and it has really inspired me today and I really want to share with you. One thing that most of us do not know that, or one thing that most people understand that fatherhood is one of the most priceless um, parts of life that every man would want to go through. But what happens when a father, when a father do, not, or do not receive the expected um, lifestyle or but a father do not um, get to see the expected lifestyle he had muttered into his or her son or daughter um, for so long. Um, it, there has been certain conversations about a specific son of a man of God who um, has been in the news, especially in Ghanaian social media news and Ghanaian um, conversations, internet conversations, for a long time that this guy is really, really putting his father's name in, in disdain. Um, also for the fact that his father is one of the most prominent men of God in the country, and this young man is seen all over social media doing stuff that do not um, speak well of the morals or the teachings that his father has been putting out there. In another way, too, some people will say that um, the story of this young boy is in a way to help us Christians understand that not all of us are going to have everything as perfect as we wish it to be. But today, I've come across an article or a publication about this particular young man, that is Daniel Duncan Williams, son of Archbishop Duncan Williams of the Action Chapel of International Ghana. And that article has really, really inspired me and changed my whole perspective about how this young man is living his life in Ghana and on social media. Um, let's kindly check out some of the things that were written. So this article or this write-up was put up on Facebook of, by a guy named Samuel Solomon. I presume Samuel Solomon is a Nigerian, and according to the story, he came to Ghana for some time, and something that he saw changed his perspective. And so I want to read what Samuel Solomon had encountered, and let's see what you also think about it. So this is a, this a story according to Samuel Solomon. He said, Do you know why I love the Archbishop Duncan Williams of Ghana? I was home one day just minding my business when my pastor friend, he mentioned his pastor friend named Eric, called me to come to Action Chapel for one of their evening services. So Action Chapel is the, um, how do you call it, the prayer cathedral. I think probably it will be the prayer cathedral, which is the headquarters of the Action Chapel International. And he said, when he called me for one of their evening service, back then I said to myself, I said to me and myself that I am not going to any church. And so I said no. However, I somehow went and the ushers directed me to the front row. It's as though they were expecting me. Anyone who has been to the Action Chapel or the Prayer Cathedral will testify to the, this thing that this guy is saying here, that when you go to the Action Chapel Prayer Cathedral, my goodness, how the ushers treat you in that church. It's like they've been expecting you to come to the church. Bro, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I was there last year, you know, for the Impact 2023. And from what I saw and witnessed, how the ushers over there treated people who came for the event. My goodness. It's like they've been expecting you, oh, welcome. Oh, prodigal son, we love you. We are, you get you they get that vibe, but we are not prodigal sons, you know. Yeah, that was just by the way. So he says that it's as though they were expecting me. Man of the worship, man so he says, man, the worship was one for me, and it was, he said, I felt like I was in America, but I noticed that every chair on the pulpit had people sitting on them except one chair. So I asked my pastor friend, Eric, bro, 
that chair is empty and why is it empty? So this guy is saying like when he went to the Action Chapel, the prayer cathedral, the service over there was so beautiful. The ambience, the auditorium, the ministrations and whatever in the auditorium made it feel like um, he, was a church, he was in a church in America. And just as I said, if you've actually been in the Action Chapel, the prayer cathedral on the Spintex Road before, bro, you understand what this guy is saying. The, the church, the ministrations in the church, the presence the ambience, the aura over there is so beautiful and so welcoming, you know. Yeah. So let's continue. So he said, he asked his friend, like, on the pulpit, there were several chairs arranged over the beautiful ones, and people were seated on all of them. But then there was a particular chair that nobody was sitting in it. And so he asked his pastor friend, Eric, why is nobody sitting in that chair? Or why is that chair empty? And he told me that that is Daniel's chair. When he's not around, nobody sits on it. And I was like, is it the Daniel that I know? He said, yes. So this is where my conversation comes up in that people will know you by a particular name, but God does not know you by that name, you know? Yeah. Because on social media, everybody be like, is this the son of the archbishop? Is this the, is this the, there is so much is this around him. So he asked the same thing. Is this the, the Daniel that I know? And the pastor friend was like, yeah, the Daniel that you know. From that day, my perspective on the prodigal son changed. Some of you, when you, when you refer to people as prodigal, it's just because you, your brain lacks oxygen. I was saying to myself, so with all the disgrace this boy has put his father through, with all the things he's done, his father still has his seat intact. Eric told me, yeah, nobody sits the when Daniel is not around. My perspective on fatherhood changed the day or that day because the fatherhood I was introduced to was a Ponzi scheme. It's like I would need to impress my father before he'll even notice me. But it all takes to be, but all it takes to be a son is just being a son. You don't need to do anything to be a son. You just need to be a son. This is like a very beautiful write-up as I saw from the, the young man's, um, what's the name, Samuel Solomon on social media, when he spoke about his encounter, when he, go, he went to the um, prayer cathedral Action chapel, about the beautiful thing that the man of God physically is doing. But then also spiritually, it speaks a lot about the man, um, Archbishop Duncan Williams, such a powerful man who, underst who understands the Bible so well and practices its, its precepts just as it is, you know, um, a prodigal son, I mean, people will call or so-called. I don't want to t tag him with that name because I personally like the Wills. I, I, I listen to his ministrations and I love his songs. Um, recently, I've seen his, his new single. He's about to release Trending on TikTok. It's such a beautiful, I think, yeah, I will, we'll play it. We'll play it in the, in the video for you to see. Such a beautiful song he's about to release. And that guy, I feel like God is going to use him one day, you know. But the devil must have, the devil has a way of, how many people? And this guy has talked about his experience of what he, what he observed when he went to the prayer cathedral action chapel where a chair in the church on the pulpit was reserved for the man who, or the guy who is putting his father's name so much through the mud. I mean, for what we see on the internet is so different. But then this is something that someone has observed and is talking about. There, there were some comments that came in relation to um, the post that a young man put out. One comment from um, Robina, she says, the love between father and son. God truly loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, Bright Alec Blaine says that this is so spiritual. It takes a man full of the spirit to do that. That, that is a man of faith. Um, another person says that I had the chance to listen to this guy eight minutes preaching on Titan and I bet you everyone was on their feet before he finished. The guy is loaded. Like I said earlier, Daniel is really, really, really intelligent. He's, he's there. You know, he's that guy that God, I feel like God is going to use him one day, but we don't know the reason why, but we pray that God brings him on track in the right time. And so, yeah, this has been some of the comments that has been spoken about on social media with respect to um, D. Wills, son of Archbishop Duncan Williams. And it was such a beautiful inspiration, and I feel like I should share with you for us to understand that in as much as we feel like we are lost or we have broken our way from God, he still has a place for us. Let's use what Archbishop Duncan Williams is doing in his church to, 
to understand or to help us understand that in everything that we do, God loves us. And the only thing that we have to do is to surrender. Surrender ourselves to him. Just confess, God, I am a sinner. God, I pray that you will forgive me my sins. And God is just and able to do that. He's calling us every day to come into his food. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter what you have done. God does not look into the things you have done because he created us. He knows our hearts more than we do and he knows what he wants for us or what he wills for us. And so come as you are. There's a song that says, just as I am without one plea, you know. We, we come as we are. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Let us profess and confess to, to the living God that he is the one who created us and he is going to see us through the valleys of the shadows of the devil. My name has been Neza Brown and this is Christian Vibes TV, your preferred Christian entertainment hub. Subscribe to our channel and catch you next time on our next episode. Every time I try and make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground
powerful. Powerful. Take it. <laughs> Daniel, take it. <laughs>